It is 10.08. Uh, my name is Lisa Martin. I'm chair of the Board of Elections. We normally call it the BOER. This meeting is called to order. This is a special hearing that would normally be open to the general public. However, due to the current horrific coronavirus pandemic situation, the Douglas County Courthouse is temporarily closed to the general public. This hearing is being broadcast live on DC TV 23 and alternatively through the following listen only telephone conference number 770-920-7326, conference ID 27326. Please note the broadcast on DC TV 23 will be available on broadcast television, but not on the streaming through the Douglas County website. On behalf of the board, wishes for the best healthy outcome are sent to everyone. Those in physical attendance at this meeting are the BOER members, the BOER attorney Dave Cole, elections director Milton Kidd and staff, Anthony Britt, Mark Alcarez and his attorney, Diane LaRosse, and with his other attorney, please say your name. Yes, I'm Brian Tyson. Brian Tyson is the additional attorney. We are observing the practice of being seated apart from each other, social distancing. Does everyone have a copy of the agenda? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda. Is there a second? I second. All in favor with the board members? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion is approved. The agenda has been approved. The new business is the special hearing for Mr. Mark Alcarez. I'm reminding everyone that this board meeting is not a court of law. Thus, to the traditional rules that apply in a court of law do not apply here. This board always conducts hearings in a fair and orderly fashion. The board members have a copy of the complaint and attachments. The board members, election director, Mr. Britt, Mr. Cole, also received electronic copies of the response from Mr. Alcarez's attorney, Diane LaRosse. At this special hearing, the board members will listen carefully, ask questions, discuss, and make a decision after Mark Alcarez and or his attorneys address the issues raised in a qualifications channel challenge filed by the complainant, Anthony Britt. Anthony Britt, as the complainant, would you come to the microphone, please? Identify yourself, please. My name is Anthony Britt, residing in Douglas County, registered voter and taxpayer. Any other comments? No, my petition speaks for it, so thank you. Thank you. So I would like for the elections director, Milton Kidd, to read the complaint. He's coming to the microphone. Complaint challenge, uh, challenging the candidate filing for Mark Joe Alvarez, candidate for Douglas County Coroner. March 9, 2020, it's addressed to myself, Milton Kidd, Director, Douglas County uh, Elections and Voter Registration, 8700 Hospital Drive, First Floor, Douglas County Courthouse, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. Mr. Kidd, my name is Anthony Britt. I certify that I am a resident of Douglas County, Georgia. Additionally, I am a registered voter of the Boundary Waters Precinct, Douglas County. My residency address and mailing address is as follows. 
Based on the above criteria, I am uh, qualified to bring forth this complaint to challenge the candidacy of Mark Joe Alcarez. Mr. Alcarez, a candidate for Douglas County Coroner, complaint. The nature of this complaint is to address Mr. Alcarez's violation of OCGA 21-2-561, uh, which disqualifies him from being eligible for election and to hold office of coroner pursuant to OCGA 45-16-1 subsection B subsection C. Evidence clearly suggests that Mr. Alcarez uh, misrepresented his residency in Douglas County in violation of OCGA 21-2-561 when he uh, completed his voter registration. Georgia law lists the qualifications and disqualifications of someone interested in being elected and holding the office of coroner. Among these qualifications are no person shall be eligible to offer uh, for election or to be or to hold the office of coroner unless he or she is a registered voter. OCGA 45-16-1 subsection B subsection C. The Georgia Election Code, OCGA 21-2-256, provides relevant parts. Subsection A, any person who willfully Section 1 uh, registers as an elector knowing that such elector does not possess the qualifications required by law. Section 2 registers as an elector under another name uh, than the elector's own name or knowingly uh, give false information when registering as an elector shall be guilty of a felony. Upon conviction thereof shall be sentenced to imprisonment for no less than one nor more than 10 years or pay a fine not to exceed uh, $100,000 or both. Moreover, uh, the Georgia voter registration form sample attached uh, here, a sample form attached here of uh, exhibit A provides one in any person who registers to vote knowing that such person does not possess the qualifications required by law who registers under any name other than such person's own name or who knowingly gives false information and registering shall be guilty of a felony, OCGA 21-2-256. Above the signature line on the Georgia voter registration form, it also requires a person to swear or affirm their residency. I swear or affirm that I, at the, at the address listed above, see Exhibit A, Mark Alvarez, Voter Registration Information, Secretary of State's website lists an address for Mr. Alcarez at 2581 uh, Andy Mountain Road, Villarica, Georgia. Andy Mountain is in parentheses and quotations. Attach here uh, after uh, here to an exhibit B, however, the Douglas County property website shows the property at Andy Mountain as a vacant lot. Absent a dwelling, as such, uh, is uninhabitable. See Exhibit B. Thus, Mr. Alvarez knowingly gave false information while registering as an elector in violation of OCGA 21-2-561. Therefore, due to Mr. Alvarez's violation of the law, he is not valid. He is not a valid registered uh, voter pursuant to the qualifications of coroner OCGA. 45-16-1, subsection B, subsection C. If it is found that Mr. Alvarez violated election law by providing an invalid residency address to his voter registration, Mr. Alvarez's voter registration shall be immediately revoked by the board, uh, by the election superintendent and the secretary of state, and this same manner shall be referred to the Attorney General or Douglas County District Attorney for possible criminal prosecution. Upon Mr. Alvarez shall be disqualified from being included on the ballot as a candidate for the office of Douglas County Coroner. I swear and affirm under penalty and prejudice and uh, perjury for foregoing statements are true to the best of my knowledge and ability, and is signed in date. Thank you. Okay, this time I Madam would. Madam Chair, for purposes of the record, I might suggest that the board. Yes, thank you. Accept these various submissions uh, and not as name them as certain exhibit numbers to be appended to the minutes of the meeting. Okay. So, so uh, I might suggest that we 
Okay. Exhibit A. Okay. Okay, we need a microphone. It was my suggestion to the chairwoman that we admit uh, as exhibit A to the meeting minutes a copy of the complaint by Mr. Britt that was just read into the record by Mr. Kidd. And uh, Mr. Alcarez's attorneys indicated there was no objection to that. It is accepted. Exhibit A. Okay, shall we go forth with the other things for the exhibits or are we doing one at a time? It might be my suggestion as a way to proceed as we've, I think, believe now heard the position of the complainant and it would be appropriate for the board to now allow Mr. Alcarez's attorneys to present their rebuttal. For its expediency, I would suggest that perhaps we admit as Exhibit B to the hearing a copy of the written submission and exhibits that they submitted in advance and uh, it not be necessary that that be read into the record but accepted as an exhibit and then we can allow his counsel to um, speak at the podium and present their rebuttal and following that I think the board could ask questions. We accept that. Okay. So with Mr. Alcarez and or his attorneys, please come to the podium and tell us your name again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there was one suggestion, Madam Chair, that we, um, that the board accept as Exhibit B, the declaration of candidacy and affidavit. Exhibit, Exhibit B. B, I thought we were using, it's Just, a part of Exhibit B. Uh, standalone Exhibit B would be the declaration of candidacy and affidavit okay. packet that, that Mr. Kidd distributed at the beginning. Okay. And then Exhibit C would then be uh, the written submission by Mr. Alcarez's attorneys. Thank you. And is there any objection there to those? There is no objection. No objection. Thank you. Thank you. You may go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Brian Tyson, and I'm at Taylor English Duma. And we, uh, me and Diane LaRosse represent Mr. Alcarez in this matter, and we appreciate all of you taking the time in, like we've talked about, this most unusual of seasons to try to navigate these questions for us and appreciate your service on the board. The way we see things, there's ultimately three questions the board has to answer today. The first question is, is Mr. Alcarez a resident of Douglas County? Um, and then once that question is concluded, the next question is, did he ever cease to be a registered voter of Douglas County at any point with the address changes we'll discuss? Then the third question is, is he then still eligible and qualified to be a candidate for coroner? So I'll just kind of take those in order and try to work through that with everybody. Um, first of all, as to his residency in Douglas County, um, Exhibit C, the, the lengthy reply we've uh, provided to you, hopefully provide sufficient documentation that Mr. Alcarez has been a resident of Douglas County continuously since the early 80s. Um, he most recently had a house on Big Tree Point from 2011 through 2018. When he sold that property in 2018, he physically moved to another address in the same precinct. So on um, the address there on Veterans Memorial Drive and purchased property to build a house which is our uh, Andrews Mountain Road address on that point. And so, I'm sorry, Andy Mountain Road. And so at that point, Mr. Alcarez, um, all three of those addresses are in the same precinct. They're all within a very short distance of each other. And during that time, Mr. Alcarez never ceased to be a resident of Douglas County. The, the way I think of this is like a college student. If someone moves to Athens to go to school at the University of Georgia, they can either register to vote at their temporary place of residence in Athens, or they can maintain their residence back home, and they have a choice of which one to do. 
So Mr. Alcarez, you don't lose your residency simply by leaving or simply by moving. You remain a resident of the county along the way. And um, if the board has specific questions maybe on that point, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of question about his residency of Douglas County. I'm sure it's probably mostly about the registration and whether he's a registered voter. So I'll pause there. Are there any specific questions on the Douglas County residency? No, we okay. accept that he's a Douglas County resident. Okay, thank you. Um, so then the second question then becomes, did he ever cease to be a registered voter in the in midst of changing the addresses? And so the, when you think about this kind of from a global perspective, the voter registration list is maintained by each county. So it's the Douglas County, it's the registration list of Douglas County, as you all are aware. And we have situations in the code where we contemplate people voting at addresses at which they don't reside. And so if you move, for example, a week before election day, under 21 to 218, there are provisions to ensure you still get to vote. We want to err on the side of letting people vote. Um, and there's a, a case that is relevant to this from a few years ago at the Court of Appeals called Cook versus Randolph County Board of Elect uh, Registrars. And in that case, Mr. Cook had been a resident of Randolph County, and then his house burned down, and so he no longer had a place to live in the county. He ended up purchasing a house in Dothan, Alabama, so over the state line from Randolph County, but continued to make, receive mail in Randolph County, continued to act as a, a, as a Randolph County resident, but didn't have a home. And the Board of Registrars removed him from the list of electors and said, you're no longer a resident of Randolph County. The Georgia Court of Appeals reversed that decision and said that the, the Board of Registrars had gotten it wrong because although Mr. Um, Cook had a resident, had a house he lived in outside the county, there was no evidence in that case that he had actually intended to change his residence. And as long as he is a resident of Randolph County, he was properly on the Randolph County Board, the Randolph County Voter Registration list. So in this case, we have something that's a little clearer. Mr. Alcarez sold his house in October 2018, but then remained a registered voter for the November 2018 elections. Um, and then when he went to the Department of Driver Services, it also updated his voter registration to the Andy Mountain Road address. He didn't realize that it was updating his voter registration in that process, but once automated voter registration caught that, um, it still was the address where he intended to reside because he's planning to build a house there, he's, that's where he wants to reside, that is in his uh, approach, his current place of residence. He's temporarily living just uh, less than a half mile away at another address, but that's where he intends to reside. So that, that would be, number one, a valid place to be registered. But the second thing is, once Mr. Alcarez discovered there was a discrepancy between where he's currently living and the address he put on his declaration and the voter registration database, he has now updated his registration to affect the Veterans Memorial Highway address. So his registration currently has the address where he's sleeping at night. It's, it's akin to the college student where you're at a temporary location. You intend to move to Andy Mountain Road as soon as you get that built. But in the meantime, you're staying at the same place, same precinct, all along the line there. And this is where federal law enters into the equation for you as the Board of, of Registrars and Elections to consider this. Because the National Voter Registration Act specifically says, and we cited this in our letter to you, that when there's a change of address to another address within the same registrar's jurisdiction, the responsibility of the registrar at that point is, according to the U.S. Code, correct the voter registration list and that the registrant's name may not be removed from the official list of eligible voters by reason of such change of address, except as provided in subsection D, and subsection D involves the no contact process where you send a notice, you wait to hear when somebody comes back, and they, they have to respond to the postcard. So for the board's perspective, Mr. Alcarez never stopped being a registered voter because he was continuously a resident of Douglas County. And if there was some question about his address, then the only thing that is the responsibility of the board to do is correct that address. You can't find that he was not a registered voter in that process. And the other piece of the complaint in section 561 that uh, the complainant has, uh, has cited, there re there's a requirement of knowing and willfully taking action. And there's nothing in the record before the board that Mr. Alcarez knowingly and willfully took any action to misrepresent his current address. Um, as I've explained the process, he put down exactly the addresses where he looked at. 
the board could determine that either he is a resident of Andy Mountain Road or that he's a resident of Veterans Memorial Highway currently. But as of right now, his voter registration, his declaration of candidacy, and his current habitation are all the same at the address on Veterans Memorial Highway. Um, there's been a lot of litigation in our state about removing people from the voter rolls. And I think it's very important to remember that we want to err on the side of finding people are registered to vote. And so we would urge the board to deny the challenge to his status as resident of Douglas County. And once you find he's a resident of Douglas County, then you would have to find that he is also has been and remains a properly registered voter in Douglas County. And then as a result of that, the challenge to Mr. Alcarez's qualifications should also be denied and he should be allowed to move forward as a candidate for the office of coroner. And that's all I have unless the board okay. has any questions. I, we don't have any at this time. Tell me your name again, please. Yes, sir, it's Brian Tyson, B-R-Y-A-N-T-Y-S-O-N. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. There might be some questions for the board members. Yes, I'm sorry. Microphone. You need to use the microphone. And as you speak, please introduce, give your name, please. My name is David Fedak. <clears throat> My question is, if Mr. Alcarez listed his residence as um, on the voter registration during the qualification period as 2581 Andy Mountain Road, Villarica, Georgia, why did he list a vacant lot as a resident? Well, just to be clear, Mr. Alcarez didn't list that on his declaration of candidacy. So on his declaration of candidacy, he used the 14370 Veterans Memorial Highway address. And that was it, when the declaration asked for his current residence, that's what he listed as his residence address. The only issue with the Andy Mountain Road address came when the Department of Driver Services updated his voter registration when he changed his driver's license at that point without his knowledge that it was also updating his voter registration. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Maisha Good. Good morning. Uh, my question is, when did he go to the DMV to update his um, driver's license? Mark, when did, when did that happen? Do you remember approximately? Um, was it Let before you qualified or was it before you qualified? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the question to me again, so looking at the documents that I have in front of me as it relates to voter registration, it states um, that if you, I mean, I understand you said no, knowingly, knowing, knowingly and willingly, um, but he submitted an address that did not have a structure. Mm -hmm. You can't vote at a place that doesn't have, you don't live there. So in your analysis, um, what does that tell you? Because legally it's, it's not right. And so, so that's what we're trying to prove. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, we understand he's a resident. We got it. He's been here for a long time. I saw that in your affidavit as well. I read that. So we do agree with you that you are residents of this county. You've been here a long time. But the question in play comes in at when he registered as a, a voter, why did we see on the Secretary of State and the information provided with, to us the Andy address, which is not a legal structure? Um, and so to me, looking at that, it's, it tells me that it was falsified. So how do we move forward with that? So I think there's a couple things to remember. So first of all, there's no requirement there. There has to be a structure at a place where you live. So this is actually a topic of conversation among activists for homeless individuals of, if I'm someone without a home, how can I be a registered voter? And a lot of the ways we resolve that is through the place that that person usually resides. Um, and the intent of the individual is the key. So just like Mr. Cook, after his house burned down in Randolph County, didn't have a physical structure in Randolph County. He was still, as the Court of Appeals found, a properly registered voter in the county. The only question under both federal law and here is which address is the right address? And as, as we see things here, 
the Andy Mountain Road address could be a proper address for Mr. Alcarez to intend to reside. That's where he does intend to reside. He intends to build, finish building his house and live there. But he also could intend to reside where he's currently living. And so that's, again, the college student example I was using. And in this scenario, um, when his Department of Driver Services address was updated to that address, um, it wasn't that it somehow made his voter registration invalid because the, the federal law would prohibit that from happening. Um, you can't just, as the federal law says, remove somebody from the voter rolls because they changed their address. All, I think it's also important to recognize all of these addresses are within the same precinct and the same um, locality with each other. I had an election contest last year where a similar issue came into play. And so I think the only time where the Andy Mountain Road address could become an issue is if there was some challenge after the fact to it was in a different district than the place where he was actually staying. You could argue maybe there was an illegal vote cast about what was the proper residency. But in this case, Mr. Alcarez could properly be a resident of Andy Mountain Road, properly be a resident of Veterans Memorial Highway, and neither of those addresses would invalidate his voter registration. The only thing the board could do is simply correct it to what the board believed was the correct address, which has already happened, uh, as I see it, because Mr. Alcarez now lists as a voter registration address the address that matches what he said on his declaration. I understand, but we were talking about, you know, before he went to the DMV, which we don't know what date that was. But I guess I have a, just a two more questions, if you don't mind. So my question is, did he, so as you know, there's just public information. And as a candidate, the candidate, the, it, it lies on the, the onus is on the candidate to ensure that everything lines up properly, um, whether it's address, um, the documents provided for qualifications and is indeed correct. Um, so I guess my question, has it states on the Secretary, Secretary of State's website, I went on as well, it's public information, and it said you must file a notice of your new address. This can be done by writing to your county board of registrar's office or by submitting a new voter registration application. So my question is, is when he moved or sold his house in 2018 and moved in with his parents, did he um, notify the board of election of, of anything, of, of a change of address? So where we have to go with that, the, the Secretary of State's questions are not necessarily exactly what is in the law. So under 21-2-218, uh, there is an obligation of an elector to update the Board of Registrars, but the deadline for that is the fifth Monday prior to the primary or election in which such elector wishes to vote by submitting a change of address in writing. So the deadline isn't 30 days. It's not like a driver's license. It's a different timeline. I understand. So are you saying that he updated the Board of Election when the DMV updated it? Is that what you're saying? Yes, because that's okay. the way the process works through our automated voter registration okay. process in Georgia. Okay. So, but on the Secretary of State, it says the person must do that. So we were not aware, to my knowledge, please, I'm new to the board, so you all can tell me if, if you were aware before the, this notice came before you or not. Um, and then secondly, what was his address before Andy Mountain? So um, let me ask the, answer the first question first, then I'll give you the address. So the first answer to the first question is when you now under Georgia's automated voter registration, I believe starting in 2016, when you went to the DDS and updated your information, there used to be a checkbox saying, I'd like for this to update my voter registration information. It used to be that wasn't checked, and you had to take affirmative action to select it. Now it's automatically checked. You have to uncheck it, and if you don't uncheck it, then DDS each night sends an update to the Secretary of State, which gets pushed down to the registrars through our voter registration system to then capture those updates, and that's a voter registration application. And then to answer your second question, the address immediately before Andy Mountain Road was the one on Big Tree Point. So that would be the, the address there. And the, that, and that address at one time was registered as a voter registration. Correct, yes ma'am. I have one question. I'm looking at a blank state of Georgia application for voter registration and name, address, residence address, mailing address, telephone number, date of birth, driver's license. And in box number six, it says I swear and affirm that I am a citizen of the United States. I'm over 17. Then it says I swear or affirm that I reside at the address listed above. Mm -hmm. So if somebody signs that, 
and that address does not have a home on it, it's vacant. How is that, how does that work? So there's a couple of things there. Number one, if it's vacant, it still can be a residence uh, for purposes of your legal habitation. This is where I intend to reside because not, not that this is this situation, but if I pitched a tent on that property and I owned it and that's where I stay and that's where I want to be my residence, that can be my residence. So the mere fact that there's not a structure doesn't make it not a legal residence. But the second piece is um, someone can certainly mistakenly believe their residence is one location when it actually is legally somewhere else. And if that happens, that's where we have the requirements of federal law that say if the board determines when this person registered, they said, I reside at this address, they say, well, actually, no, what is a legal matter, we think you reside at this other address. The responsibility of the registrar is to correct the address, not to remove the person from the voter rolls. So that's, that's where the residency of the county comes into play. Because let's say I give an address in Cobb County, and I say I reside at this address, and Cobb County says, well, no, you're not a citizen, you're not a resident of Cobb County, you actually live in Douglas County. In that situation, we got a much more complicated area because yeah. now we got two different registrar's jurisdictions. So the federal law provision we cited to you doesn't apply, but when it's within the same jurisdiction, the only responsibility is to update and correct the address, not to remove the person from the voter rolls. Are there any other questions? Mr. Kidd, Mr. Proctor, Mr. Zimmerman? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We would like to ask Mr. Alcaraz, could you come forward, please? Thank you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. My name is Mark Alcaraz, Mark Joel Alcaraz, resident of Douglas County and candidate for Douglas County Coroner. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, my name is David Fedak. Mr. Alcaraz, are you aware that your property listed at 2581 Andy Mountain Road, Villa Rica, Georgia, <laughs> does not meet the legal definition of a residence? All right, can I, can I address that briefly for me? We, I know that we're not doing official formal rules of evidence, but that is calling for a legal conclusion by someone who's not a lawyer, so we would object to Mr. Alcaraz being able to answer what the legal effect of his residency is. He can certainly say as to the facts of what was involved, but just wanted to do that before he answers. Yes, I, I'm, I'm aware that there is, you know, a house not there at this moment. However, we do have a building permit in place, and the only thing that has stopped the structure, I, 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 we clearly understand what's what we're looking at here. But I do reside at the address in which I gave on my intent to run for Douglas County Corner. I am a registered uh, and always have been a registered voter for in Douglas County. I've lived here. And I mean, the reason uh, I'll state the only reason that the, right now we have not finished that house where we're living at 25 is because we want we've put back some money because there's some certain special things we want to do to the house and we want to go in with actually no mortgage payment as little as possible. But we have a building permit that is, as I've been told before, that was not able to be found. I believe that's in the evidence. But uh, my attorney's already answered the question in regards to uh, the legalization of, of, of the house and the property. I don't know if this is stressing you, Mr. Alcarez, um, but I guess my question still stands as, sounds like you're saying the law is loose and that you have the ability to, to change it, as maybe as fit or as not, but you have the ability to, it's just like a set of bylaws, right? So it sounds like to me you're saying that the, the, balls, the, the, the laws that the Secretary of State or, or Georgia has set as it relates to voter registration, um, and it not being 
you're not able to live at that residence, you're saying that what that code says is not accurate. Is that what you're telling me? No, ma'am. Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to explain is that the key question, like the Georgia Court of Appeals said, for where a person's residence is, is what does that individual intend? And in 21.2.217, there's a list of 15 different factors that you have to look at in terms of what is the person's intent. Some things you can look at. Um, you can look at where they get mail. You can look at where they um, have said they want to live. Mm -hmm. Some things you can't look at. You can't look at where their spouse resides as a basis for that. But Georgia law, we're looking for what is the intent of the individual who's registering. <laughs> and so you, you have testimony from Mr. Alcarez already and in the, in the documents we provided of what he intended his residence to be. And if the board disagrees with that, then the only other address it could be is the address that is currently on his voter registration. So it's not that there is any issue in terms of whether you'd stop being a registered voter because you're in Douglas County. Yeah, no question. There's no question yeah, about no that. Question. And as long as he's a registered voter, he's qualified to hold to, to be a candidate for the office of coroner. Okay. So um, I just just want to be clear that you you know that the code OCGA 21-2-561 um, that states the va if, the, if it's a vacant lot, absent a dwelling, and as such is uninhabitable, you're saying here that it does not matter if a voter goes in and register themselves to, to register to vote and they pick, let's say Kroger's or the courthouse or just something random that is okay as long as they are a registered voter. They don't have to live there. That's what I need to be clear on. Well, I, I'm, you're saying that that language about a vacant lot is in 212-561? I believe so. Knowingly know. gave false information while registering as an elector. That also states it there as well. Um, but it also says, vacant lot, absent a dwelling, and as such is uninhabitable. I'm happy to share my copy of 561 with you, but that's not, it's not. Do you know which section, which section that is? Because this is, I'm looking at Brits. I'm looking at Brits, yes. Okay. 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 So I guess my question to and I don't know if we can access a Brit. Where is this information? Where did this come from? And do you have it in front of you there that shows anything about a dwelling? Um, I don't know if we, if Milton or anyone has the code. He, he, uh, I have a code section, but I would prefer to change it. Okay. Mr. Brit is not representing the Baptist Code. Okay. 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 As I read Mr. Britt's complaint, he is not representing that um, any part of the code uses the words dwelling or uninhabitable. He is instead saying that um, the property on the Douglas County website shows that, that that particular lot is a vacant lot without a dwelling on it and is uninhabitable. That's his allegation about the nature of the property, but um, I don't think he's saying that that's what the code says, and that is, that's not what the 21-2 to 561 says. Okay, what Thank about you. code section 161020? Any person who uses a false or fictitious name or gives a false or fictitious address in an application for a driver's license provided for shall be guilty of a violation of code. So that, that Title 16 is criminal statutes okay. generally, so that's going to be unrelated to elections and determinations of residency. Okay. I don't know that specific section, but that title is going to be dealing with criminal offenses. Okay. Questions? Introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. My name is Bob Proctor. Um, the word I hear here often is intent. And to me, Mr. Alcarez's intent is to build on that particular lot. The fact that it's empty is immaterial in my opinion because 
you could pull a trailer on there or a tent, as you might have suggested. So I don't think that the fact that there's an empty lot is, is important here. And plus, you have shown intent to remain here, build a house, remain here, and be a productive citizen of the county. And it's, so as far as the being a legal voter, I see no problem there. So in 2018, you, you moved in with your parents. When did you acquire the building permit? If my memory serves me correctly, I'm getting a little older, but I believe we, we acquired the building permit uh, the following May, June area time frame. Okay, I'll have to do a little bit of research because I have your um, building permit 2019. I did. Okay. <laughs> Is it in the early part? Exhibit F to Mr. Alcarez's uh, attorney's letter contains a residential driveway permit request submitted on April 2nd, 2019. And it looks like an application for a single family dwelling permit submitted on um, April 1st, 2019. So I think it's important to remember that the deadlines for updating voter registration relate to when you're going to vote in an election. So you have to have your updated your registration by the fifth Monday prior to the election. And so in 2019, there, there may have been some special elections. I, I don't know offhand, but generally speaking, we're not going to have elections in 2019 in an off year. So the deadline for updating the voter registration wouldn't have come at that point. And even if there was no building permit, that wouldn't affect Mr. Alcarez's intent. He obviously purchased the property and plans to move to that property as soon as he could. Speaking of elections, uh, yourself, my name is Milton Kidd. I'm the Director of Elections and Registration. Uh, according to our record, Mr. Alcarez did vote in the March uh, 24th presidential preference primary On 310, I believe. The registration deadline for that election was February 24th. But that's okay. He voted in March, at, at, which is the, the, the It was still at the, the Andy Mountain. To my knowledge, his address is still at the Andy Mountain address. The way it works with voter registration is you're not, when submitting an application is not a completion of a voter registration, you're not actually registered at an address even an update until that application is processed. If uh, Mr. Alvarez has submitted a new change of address, that change of address does not become valid until it is actually processed. We're actually at the point of working back through a backlog because the registration deadline was February 24th. So we were legally required to hold applications uh, received after February 24th until the concurrence uh, conclusion of the election. So the state opened back up uh, the voter registration rolls on this past Monday to begin updating those applications. So we're currently working through that backlog of a couple thousand now. So there's still individuals that are in flux right now with registration. And so, 
if I could just help me with that a little bit, uh, Exhibit G to our response is the update Mr. Alcarez filed on it March the 17th, just so y'all have that. And I know the, the question is going to be then, well, if Mr. Alcarez voted and failed to notify people, what, what is the legal effect of that? And 28.2.218D uh, specifically addresses what happens if an elector fails to notify the Board of Registrars by the chain, about the change of address before the fifth Monday prior to the election where they're voting. And in that case, the statutes, if you move in the same county and you are specifically allowed to vote at the location of your former residence. And so there's, no, again, no suspension of your voter registration. There's no issue there. The code specifically contemplates that if the registration doesn't get there in time, we still err on the side of making sure that person stays eligible to vote because, again, federal law prohibits us from removing someone from the voter registration records. The registrars can correct the address, but that's the responsibility there. What you know of the law to be, yeah. Dave? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are just passing around the same tissue. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I don't know if it's any different. No, no, she's I'm okay. changing yeah. the tissue. <laughs> the tissue. <laughs> I, I might suggest that um, the board ask all of its questions to the parties, and then, um, and then if it would. Like legal counsel, we could break into an executive session for attorney-client privilege, and I could, um, I could advise the board uh, about those questions, and then and then we'd have, of course, to reconvene for you to deliberate and um, and and vote publicly. But we could do that for attorney-client privilege communications. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? I move that we go into executive session. Maisha, good. Do we have a second? David Fedak, I second. All in favor? Aye. A show of hands. Mr. Proctor, Mrs. Zimmerman, Mr. Fedak. Chair and Ms. Good, thank you. We will go into executive session. We'll be back. Okay. Okay, it is 1125. We have come out of executive session and we will move forth. Is there a motion to be made regarding the conversation and discussion that we have had today? My name is David Fedak. And I move that Mr. Alcaraz be disqualified as a 2020 candidate for the position of Dutch County Delegate because he is not a valid registered voter. Is there a second? Second, Maisha Good. Mr. Fedak, would you repeat the motion? I move that Mr. Alcaraz be disqualified as a 2020 candidate for the position of Douglas County Coroner because he was not a, red, a valid registered voter. Mr. Cole. Yes. The first issue would have been the registered voter. Because we're, we're combining two things. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, there are two issues for the board to decide today. This hearing was scheduled on two issues. The, the first being whether or not um, Mr. Alcarez is a, um, 
qualified elect uh, voter who uh, is properly registered and, and should or should not remain on the list of registered voters for the county. That is a, a question that uh, the board would consider in its capacity as the board of registrars. The second issue then is based on the complaint by Mr. Britt as to whether or not Mr. Alcarez meets the qualifications to run for the position of coroner and, and, and if not, whether he should be removed from the ballot. So I suppose the board could consider either issue in, in, in either order, but it, it, logically it may make sense to consider the registration issue first. But it is up, it's up to the board. Thank you. Mr. Fedak, I would like for you to, um, I would prefer that we deal with the first question of whether Mr. Mark Alcarez was a registered voter. Could you amend, if you wish, could you amend your motion? Um, I withdraw the motion. You have another motion. I do. I move that Mr. Alcarez be disqualified as a 2020 candidate for the position of Douglas County Coroner because he was not a valid registered voter. Is there a second? Mine to good second. That motion is on the floor. Is there discussion? Yes. Oh. Uh, my name is Dan Zimmerman. Uh, there's a whole uh, list of things that would disqualify an individual from running for a specific uh, position uh, within an election. Is there any? specific issue that we're looking at in regards to this motion as far as whether he's a legal voter of this county or not, et cetera. Still open to discussion, do you have? Bob Proctor. I thought we had resolved the issue that Mr. Alcarez is a registered voter legally. There's no, I don't see any, I don't see any cause that he would be disqualified as a voter. That being a separate issue from the coroner's decision. Thank you. Any other discussion? Again, my name is Dan Zimmerman. I noted that uh, there was a lot of talk in regards to dates and stuff, and one of the prominent dates was um, the 10th of March, um, where Mr. Alvarez voted in early voting on the absentee, uh, early voting for the presidential primary. I also noted that Mr. Britt's um, challenge to Mr. Alvarez being able to um, qualify as a candidate for the position of coroner uh, was executed on the 9th of March prior to Mr. Alvarez is voting uh, in the, in the uh, presidential primary early voting. I also note that we do have a board member who notarized that execution of that challenge to Mr. Alvarez's uh, position to be able to acquire uh, opportunity to be on the ballot for uh, position of corner within the within the county. Does that preclude our board member um, from voting on this issue or um, 
Should that member stand aside? I, I have nowhere to end in. Answer that question on March 9th. Maisha Good was not a board member. Specify what date you became a board member when you got sworn in. So one, I was not on the qualifying committee. Um, that's one. So I don't know if he was referring which board member he was referring to. But secondly, I just got qualified. Milton, what day was that last um, week? Sometime I can't. I don't know the exact date. Thursday. Date. Last Thursday was the when I officially became a board member. Getting it. <laughs> Thank you. Two, though, uh, confirm with legal with our legal counsel of what a notary is and what exactly a notary does. A notary public serves as, as a, um, a witness to the execution of a legal document. They are authorized to administer oaths in the state of Georgia um, and to, to witness the execution of documents pursuant to that oath. So uh, I do see that Ms. Good appears to have notarized the complaint. I would not interpret that as her um, attesting to the contents of the complaint or participating in it, but rather she was serving in her capacity as a notary, it would appear, um, authorized, um, administering the oath to Mr. Britt and witnessing his signature on the document. Thank you. Are there any more com comments and questions in the discussion? Hearing none, okay. We have a motion on the floor. Bob Proctor, would you take the mic and tell us your vote? I'm Bob Proctor. I would prefer to hear the motion again in its entirety. Uh, David Fedak. I move that Mr. Alcarez be disqualified as a 2020 candidate for the position of Douglas County Coroner because he was not a valid registered voter. Bob Proctor, I vote no negative. Dan Zimmerman, I also vote against the motion. Deck, I vote for. Maisha Good, I vote for. So there are two yes and two no. And as the chair, I abstain. It is a tied vote, therefore, it does not pass. So at this point, is there another motion? No. Okay. Thank you, Brian. So the board has called a hearing to determine Mr. Alcarez's um, registration as a voter. And um, I, I, I guess I do, I do believe that these, the issues should be decided. Um, yeah, I don't have the, the hearing notice in front of me, but it, it does explain that the 
Yeah. So the, the, the hearing is being conducted under 21-2-6 and also 21-2-228. And, and so I, I believe the board should resolve the, the questions of whether he is, you know, a red, red, should remain on the list of registered voters or not. And I, and I guess to the extent that that motion did not pass, and that would, if that's the board's, if that's the outcome, then that would mean the complaint was not sustained and he would remain a candidate, um, you know, for coroner. And so then the only other issue formally would be to confirm that he would or would not continue as a registered voter. Is there anyone that would like to make the motion as to whether Mr. Mark Alcarez is a registered voter? My name is Bob Proctor. I make a motion that Mr. Mark Alcarez remain on the voter list, voter's roll. Could you repeat that, please? Yes, ma'am. My name is Bob Proctor. I make a motion that Mr. Alcarez remain on the voting rolls for the state of Georgia. Is there a second? I second. My name is Dan Zimmerman. Any discussion? Discussion? No discussion? <laughs> okay, the motion on the floor made by Mr. Bob Proctor and second by Mr. Dan Zimmerman. Mr. Proctor's motion was, I make a motion that Mark Alcarez remain on the voting rolls of the state of Georgia. There was no discussion, so we will have a vote. Mr. Proctor. <laughs> My name is Bob Proctor. I vote in favor of the motion. Dan Zimmerman, I vote affirmative on the motion. David Fedak, I vote against. So no. Maisha Good, I vote for. So we have Mr. Proctor, yay. Mr. Zimmerman, yay. Ms. Good, you said yay? Okay. Mr. Fedak said no. As chair, I abstain. It passes three to one. So Mr. Alcarez will remain is a registered voter. And so that will end the discussion. And that will end the meeting. Thank you. Oh, oh a motion to adjourn. It is 1142. May I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. The meeting is adjourned.